Jit Malani, thank you for inviting me to here today. Why I use the word, I'll tell you a little later. I brought my prepared speech, and I think I'm leaving it on my table. Much of it has been stolen by Chief Justice of India. But I thought uh, Chief Justice uh, always is very passionate about justice. His engagement of his mind in varied dimensions of doing justice is remarkable. But today I found something more rare, a rare passion today. Maybe Mr. Jatmalani was standing by his side and telling him that your long association with me and my family is something which is, we use something called ineradicable. That rare passion, something was very, something very interesting today. I found it so exciting that when I left my prepared speech, which would have probably talked about what cases Mr. Jet Malani argued and so on and so forth, let me only say a, a few statements. I mean, the minister is here, and I'm sure that uh, you'd agree with the Attorney General for making such probably radical statements, bold statements about what the constitution should do in our country and what good governance should be topic talking about. So I would probably say that in honor of uh, Mr. Jet Malani, if you have built uh, a grand temple in honor of Lord Ram in Ayodhya, probably we need to build institutional temples in honor of Ram Jet Malani. I have in mind a few institutional temples. One is, uh, if history of liberty in this country will be ever written, I say Ram had his mind always what Justice Learned Hand said, liberty lies in the hearts of men. So if ever history had to be written in our country, the way it is being written in some parts of the world, I pass here for a minute to say that, unlike what is being written in America or in Europe about the contribution of eminent persons in the legal fraternity to growth of law and justice has not been well attempted here in our country. We need to probably engage in a genre of literature. Women in the legal fraternity have been preeminently and fundamentally responsible for certain entrenchment of certain doctrines as part of a law and legal system. So therefore, I would like to say that let us begin to chronicle the contributions of such eminent persons in the legal fraternity who have made the trajectory of law and justice in our country very, very different from what we thought it would be like to be in 1950. So my first contribution would be to ask those of you here, probably Mahesh should have thought about a, a bigger auditorium where more and more willing minds and inclined minds would be part of a contribution, both in writing and otherwise would have been here. I invite each and every one of you who would like to be part of this uh, engagement to write about such eminent persons as an integral part of the graph of Indian constitutional history and justice administration. The second I would like to probably invite is, as I took over, uh, of course, uh, if the Attorney General cannot think on his feet, what else is fit for? So as I took over, I, I thought that uh, what Jet Malani made a difference in our, I said, the history of liberty in our country. The eminent personalities, they talk about the basic structure of the Constitution. So everything about basic structure is about liberty. You can build so many dimensions and, you know, about liberty and their connection to basic structure. But I'm not going to talk about that. But I thought the more passionate engagement of Mr. Jet Malani about liberty and how he thought that's the fulcrum of the constitutional values, it's important for us today to talk about a National Institute for Criminal Justice Administration. I think about the most common women and men in our country who face the onslaughts of justice administration without those caring hands and comforting or solace giving aid and assistance to the state. I conceive that this kind of an institution will be able to fill a huge gap 
in criminal justice administration. We are talking about the pendency of cases in trial courts and we talk about the unfortunate men and women who get into prisons without seeing a day of hope as, as quickly as they would like to have. I look at all that very uh, dark grey landscape which seem to be part of our criminal justice system. Why can't we think about removing the dark grey landscape and make it more brighter? And I think that's a great contribution and commitment as an attorney general I can think about and I'll probably conclude with a few personal re recollections. In 1980, he was arguing uh, uh, a preventive detention case. I was just about one year in the Supreme Court bar, sitting in the Chief Justice's court, listening to him, his stern, full, majestic voice. I could still find that ringing in my ears. It never faded away. I mean, many of us who are with him for long know that the stern, full, majestic voice has become part of our you know, life in the court and chronicles, you know, all over. In 1986, I was appearing on behalf of a very unfortunate Adivasi woman from Gujarat who was subjected to a sexual assault in police stations. One of the local legal aid organizations asked me, how do we go about this case? And they had a feeling that if you go to a local magistrate's court, sure, justice will not be done. So when I was asked, how do we go about this case, I said, let us ask the Supreme Court to intervene in a matter like this. Now, what else will liberty can mean if the Supreme Court will not reach out to the rescue of such unfortunate women? We built a case on violation of 14 and 21. The Supreme Court came to our rescue and was arguing that matter in the afternoon before Chief Justice Bhagavati, Mr. Jetpalani was in the court. So after a couple of hours after uh, about 4, 4.30, I thought he would have left the court. But he was in the coffee house waiting for a few people to be talking to him. And then he called me inside and said, I think uh, the one thing probably you would do good for the country is to keep liberty burning in your heart. And I think that's a, a great uh, warm advice given to me. And I think uh, I've been able to keep that in my heart. And I'm sure that um, many more occasions like this where beyond passion and beyond passion and emotion, much more intellectual and engaged uh, uh, conversations and dialogues and discourses, which will probably enrich what I would probably call again the life and comfort and solace of the least or the most disadvantaged and the least cared for in our country. If justice cannot mean anything to them, I think justice does not mean anything to any one of us. So I would probably only say that Mr. Ram is probably standing by my side as he stood by the side of Chief Justice of India to pat him on his back to be as passionate as possible about liberty and justice. And I think I'll continue to hear his voice by my side. I thank Mr. Makesh Jetlani for giving this opportunity. Thank you so much, sir. Now, to formally introduce the topic of the fourth edition of the Ram Malani Lecture Series, it is a privilege to invite the Chairman and Editor-in-Chief of Republic Media Network, Mr. Arnab Goswami,